Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Citizens Trade Policy Commission meeting, October meeting. Uh, I'd like to welcome everyone. I'm State Senator John Patrick, filling in for uh, Senator Troy Jackson. And with that, we'll start introduction. So it, it occurs to me, we've had this conversation a number of times, um, but with our own Attorney General in the room, um, mm. I guess it would make sense to ask the question, um, about transparency and accountability. So uh, we've continued to have this difficulty with uh, trying to understand uh, and be made aware of some of the negotiating that's taking place uh, to, to no avail. Uh, clearly our efforts are falling on deaf ears. So is there another avenue for us to pursue other than to continue to write letters uh, to which we expect uh, no real response? <clears throat> not being a trade negotiator myself, <clears throat> I'm aware of the darkness in which they um, travail. And, I, and I, one thing I pointed out in my remarks to the policy, a trade, forum, trade policy forum last month was just that. And I will tell you that the 48 attorneys general who signed on to a letter last uh, January 28th <clears throat> demanding similar information about transparency and particularly about enforcement of the tobacco laws for which we are primarily responsible uh, and whether or not uh, the trade policy agreement, the trade agreements they're negotiating will hamper our ability to protect the public health. Got no answer. That was January 28th. We've never gotten an answer from the trade uh, representative. We did just a couple weeks later get a, a, a response from the National Association of Manufacturers, <laughs> our newest pen pal. And uh, I thought, why are they answering on behalf of the trade representative? <laughs> uh, I, I don't know. Um, but they answered saying, you're just worrying about nothing. <clears throat> well, there have been calls to exclude tobacco products from this and other trade agreements. The proponents haven't offered a sound justification. And uh, blah, 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 blah. That's the only answer we got. It was to so totally not from the U.S. trade re yeah, representative. <laughs> so 48 attorneys general are still waiting for a, a response to their letter, of, uh, a very bipartisan group, of course. Uh, their letter of January 28th. We're in the same bind. Well, and, and Doc, I would I would comment basically. Uh, it may seem like it's to no avail, but I actually think it does have value because there are uh, organizations within within the world. Even Japan sees what we're doing. Others see what we're doing. If we get no answer, what we should do is be more public, I think, with the knowledge that here we are trying to bring transparency from the secretive process in Washington, D.C. on the corporate negotiations. Uh, I think that's kind of what Scott Smith said when he said we should probably continue on the approach to do these things and actually be more uh, vigilant in getting that information out there. Madam. Talking to some of the other interest groups uh, in Washington, um, um, I'll be talking to the other AGs in the next few weeks, trying to get them to sign on to a similar letter, but make it more of a letter to Congress, since we don't get a response from the trade representative, uh, and, and uh, publicize it with press releases and whatnot. We know that other countries have some similar concerns about, for instance, the investor state. No. We know that other countries have these concerns too, and maybe they'll read about it in the paper if we publicize them. Or Would you like to sit here? Let me see if okay. I can, uh, can. Can I just speak to this issue? Yeah, go ahead. Well, I, I wanted to pass on, on this very point about can we ever make a difference, I want to pass on some late breaking news that just oh. came across my computer from Kay Wilkie, who was the head of the IGPAC and has now finally said, I've had enough of it and turned it over to Robert Hamilton. Um, from uh, Washington State. Latest news, USTR informally floats ISDS tobacco carve-out <laughs> with some TPP... You heard me just now. T some TPP <laughs> countries. U.S. trade officials have reached out to some other Trans-Pacific Partnership countries to informally float the idea of excluding tobacco-related challenges from being brought under the deal's investor state dispute settlement mechanism, according to informed sources. This move signals the United States may be ready to bring its position on this issue closer to that of public health groups, which have demanded tobacco to be completely carved out of the agreement. 
So, and I did get a call about this from a reporter a couple days ago saying this rumor's out there, do you know anything? And I said, no, I don't. But if I did, I couldn't tell you. But I don't. <laughs> <laughs> but so that's an example, though, of where the attorneys general and public health groups and some of the developing countries, particularly in the negotiations, have been push, 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 pushing on that issue. And it may, who knows, be going somewhere. But it, it, I'm, happy to, I'm happy to hear that news. <laughs> um, at the same time, you know, I know other countries, I'm understanding that other countries, not just third world countries, but um, European countries are interested in not doing the ISDS at, at all. all. That would be a better result for yeah. everybody, I think. You saw the letter from the uh, Association of Chief Justices from a couple of months ago. They wrote the U.S. Trade Rep. They didn't get a response. The state Chief Justices from across the country are concerned about some of these negotiations. Do, do you have that to share with the committee? Because I, I do don't somewhere. think I've seen that. I, I, two of them. One a year or so ago, they wrote to the trade representative, can you hear me? Um, about licensing of lawyers, licensing and suspension of lawyers, which has always been a, uh, an attribute, a responsibility of the state court systems. And uh, there's been litigation and threats of litigation to suggest that other uh, countries might say, you can't tell our lawyers not to come into your state and practice law because that would be a violation of a trade a treaty or, or another. And then uh, the more recent letter from the, and this is obviously a nonpartisan or bipartisan group, a uh, more recent letter from the American Association of Chief Justices of State Courts uh, dealt with um, supplanting state court decisions through the ISDS process, which is very scary to me as a, an officer of the court. So planning state and federal court decisions, uh, uh, and there have been instances where under certain trade agreements, other countries have tried to subvert state court decisions. And there was one in Canada, I think a few months ago, um, a patent case, if I remember correctly, that, where um, another country said, you, you can't enforce your patent laws against us so that we can't trade this product in your country. And they just completely, the arbitration process overruled the, the Canadian court in that respect. So those are scary things that chief justices of the Supreme Courts of our states are all concerned about. And the ISDS broadly. The tobacco carve out has been floated out there as a solution to what we described in our January 28th letter, the AG's letter. Um, but the broader issue of why do we have this ISDS thing when some countries, uh, whom we respect quite a bit, don't even want it either. It's the, I understand it's the United States pushing for it, yeah. which I don't understand. Yeah. Uh, the discussion on uh, transparency. I just wondered whether um, the Attorney General wanted to say anything more about this presentation that you were part of the forum. Yeah. If, you, if you do, would you mind coming up here? Because we do have mics. One microphone. Here. The light's on. Is it working? We don't know. Thanks. I was invited to speak on behalf of the Attorneys General to this uh, trade forum uh, sponsored by a member of Congress, Rosa DeLauro and, and George Miller, and six other members of Congress who were very concerned about the transparency issue in particular. So they wanted to hear about the AG's point of view. And I talked about uh, in, in enforcing state regulations and some of the case law that's come up, as you know, the one in Canada over the pharmaceutical patents. And, there's been tobacco litigation in other countries, not yet threatened in, this, in the states because I think they're holding back. They know we're uh, keen on that issue. <clears throat> We're just waiting for them to jump all over us. Uh, <clears throat> but um, there are other regulations as well that we enforce, not just the tobacco, advertising and smoking age and all those kinds of regulations. Um, and there was some Q&A, uh, though not a whole lot. We heard from the AARP as well and a professor from uh, Columbia University, uh, Jared Bernstein, do you know him at all? No. Senior fellow at the Center on Budget and Policy Priorities, and uh, Thea Lee from AFL-CIO, a uh, guy from the AARP, and a woman from the, direct, the uh, Center for S Food Safety, who's also concerned about agricultural interests and food safety regulations. So it was kind of a, there wasn't any great conclusion to the forum, it was an open thing. Uh, it was a packed room, room this size, and it was quite informative for me. I learned a lot about what other people are concerned about, and I got to share with them the uh, perspective of the state AGs. 
And they, they had the same concerns about the trade rep, the USTR not responding to other people, inclu including members of Congress, and are working in the dark. Um, uh, and uh, I talked with them about the one response we got from the National Association of Manufacturers, who were responding sort of on behalf of the US trade rep, which I thought was strange. But, um, and I'm going to follow up with some of the other AGs in the next few weeks. I think it's important to do that before the elections because people are concerned about the speed with which things may go right after the elections, and Congress is going to be bombarded with issues relating to trade, trade agreements. In fact, a year and a half ago, no, a year ago, a year ago, I went to Taiwan on one of those trips to Taiwan, and I met with the president of Taiwan, President Ma, and they very much want to be part of the TPP, as you know. And I said to him, you know, we have concerns about that. And some of us are uh, involved in regulating tobacco and public safety issues, and we have concerns about the position of our own trade rep, whether you're involved in it or whether you're a party to it or not. So he was a little taken aback. <coughs> awesome. <laughs> yeah, it was fun. That's about it. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you, Madam Attorney General, for your update.